proposed to my girlfriend after four years together, but she said not yet twice, now I'm moving on and everyone thinks I'm the bad guy. I've been dating this girl, Kiera, for about four years now. I mean, she's amazing. Funny, smart, really chill, and we've always clicked. You know when you meet someone and everything just kind of falls into place? Yeah, it was like that with her. We met at this random party our friends dragged us to, and honestly, neither of us even wanted to be there. But we hit it off and spent the whole night just talking about stupid stuff, like bad movies and weird childhood memories. Anyway, fast forward a couple of years, and I knew I wanted to marry her. Two years in, I was pretty sure she was the one, or whatever people call it. I started saving up for a ring, thinking I'd do it when I was in a better spot with money. I had this whole plan in my head that once I was in a more stable place, I'd propose. It felt like the responsible thing to do. Plus, I didn't want to half-ass it. Kiera deserved a nice proposal, and I didn't want to be stressing about money right after. So last year, after working my ass off and feeling like I finally had my life together, or at least not completely falling apart, I decided it was time. I was so ready to take that next step. Like, I was hyped about it. And not just me. Kiera and I had talked about marriage before. She seemed into it. Always talking about how she couldn't see herself with anyone else and how she wanted to build a life together. So I felt like I wasn't going into this blind, you know? Like, it seemed like we were both on the same page. I planned the proposal for this beach where we went on our first date. We're both low-key, so I wanted it to be just us. No big public thing, no fancy restaurant where everyone's watching. Just something personal. I remember that first date like it was yesterday. We didn't have much money back then, so we packed a cheap picnic, grabbed a couple of drinks, and sat on the beach talking till it got too cold. It was perfect. Anyway, the day of the proposal, I was nervous as hell. I mean, I was sure she'd say yes, but, you know, it's still a big deal, right? I got the ring, planned the whole day, made sure we got to the beach at sunset because Kiera's always said how much she loves sunsets. The weather was perfect, by the way. Like one of those days where the sky turns all pink and purple. It was almost like a sign that this was the right moment. So we get to the beach, and I'm trying to keep it cool. But inside, I'm freaking out a little. We're walking along the shore, talking about random stuff, and then I just stop, take her hand, and start talking about how much she means to me. I told her how much I love her, how I couldn't imagine my life without her. And then I got down on one knee, pulled out the ring, and asked her to marry me. Here's the part that threw me off. She looked at me, like, really looked at me, and didn't say anything for what felt like forever. Then she says, I want to marry you, but not right now. I was like, what? My brain couldn't process that at first. I just stood there, still holding the ring, probably looking like an idiot trying to make sense of what she just said. I want to marry you, but not right now. What does that even mean? I felt my heart drop, man. She said she wasn't ready for all the engagement stuff just yet. Like, she wasn't into the idea of being engaged, and she needed more time. She didn't really explain it much further than that, just kind of said it wasn't the right moment for her. That hit me like a punch in the gut. But I didn't want to make a scene, so I just smiled and said, yeah, okay, I get it. But truthfully, I didn't get it. Not at all. We had talked about marriage. She had told me she wanted to be with me forever. And here I was, putting myself out there, only to get a half-assed rejection. But I figured, alright, maybe she just needs more time. After all, I waited a year to get my stuff together before proposing, so maybe she's just not in that place yet. I convinced myself that it wasn't that big of a deal and tried to shake it off. We ended up spending the rest of the evening pretending like everything was fine. But it wasn't. The whole vibe had shifted, and I was stuck in my own head, wondering if I had messed up. Should I have waited longer? Was it the wrong moment? Did I not know her as well as I thought? I didn't ask her any of this, though, because I didn't want to seem like I was pushing her. The thing is, I thought I was doing the right thing by giving her time. But looking back, I wish I had asked more questions. Like, I should have straight up asked her what she meant by, not right now. Was it me? Was it something else? Was she even serious about wanting to get married in the future? But instead, I just let it slide and told myself it wasn't a big deal. I spent the next year pretending like everything was fine, but it was always in the back of my mind. Every time marriage came up in conversation, I'd feel that sting again. But I told myself that maybe she'd come around. I mean, we were still happy, still going on trips, hanging out with friends, doing all the normal couple stuff. So I figured, alright, it's fine. She's just not ready yet. She'll get there eventually, right? But yeah, that's how the first proposal went. Not exactly how I planned, but I let it go because I loved her. I didn't want to push her into something she wasn't ready for. Little did I know that the whole not right now thing would become a much bigger deal later on. So after that first proposal, a whole year went by, and yeah, things were kind of weird sometimes. It was like we didn't talk about the whole I want to marry you but not right now thing ever again. I mean, I thought maybe we'd have a conversation about it after a few weeks or something, but nope, nothing. And honestly, I didn't want to bring it up either because I didn't want to seem pushy or whatever. We were still doing all the usual couple stuff, so I figured we were good. But the more time went on, the more I started to think, alright, maybe this is never happening. Like, why is she not ready? And why isn't she giving me a better reason than just not yet, you know? It's like we're almost 30, and we've been together for 4 years. At this point, you either know or you don't, right? Anyway, I started planning another proposal because deep down, I still believed she wanted to be with me forever, just like she used to say. I was thinking maybe she just needed more time, and maybe I needed to step up the proposal game. The first one was low-key, personal, just us two at the beach. But this time, I figured maybe she'd want something a bit fancier. So I started thinking of something that would be a little more special, I guess. I decided to get some of our friends involved. I didn't want a public thing, like the whole big crowd watching us. That wasn't my vibe, and I know Kiera's not into that either. But I wanted our closest friends to help me set it up. I thought it would make it more memorable. Plus, if we were surrounded by people we both care about, maybe that would make her feel more comfortable saying yes, you know? So I started planning. 
I booked this really nice botanical garden that had this beautiful fountain area, the kind with all those big roses and greenery, and it's all super romantic. I knew she'd love it because she's obsessed with nature and plants. Honestly, she has like 20 plants in our apartment that I'm always accidentally killing. So I thought, yeah, this will be the perfect spot. I even got some of our friends to help set up. We had this plan to go for dinner first, just the two of us, at this nice restaurant nearby, then head over to the garden where they'd set everything up for me. Roses, candles, the works. It was going to be perfect. I was sure of it this time. So the night of the proposal comes. I'm trying to stay cool, but inside I'm freaking out again. I kept thinking about last year and how I got shut down, and I was praying this time wouldn't go the same way. I didn't want to go through all that again. But I was optimistic, maybe too optimistic. Dinner went great. We were both in good spirits and everything seemed perfect. We laughed, had some wine, and it felt like old times, like nothing was wrong between us. After dinner, I suggested we take a walk through the botanical garden. She was all for it, no idea what was coming, of course. We get to the fountain, and it's all set up, just like I imagined. Roses everywhere, candles lighting the path. It looked amazing. Our friends had done an awesome job. I take her hand and we start walking towards the fountain. At this point, my heart's pounding like crazy, but I keep my cool. We get there, and I give this whole speech about how much I love her, how I can't imagine spending my life with anyone else, and how I'm ready to take that next step. She's tearing up, and I'm thinking, this is it. This is the moment. I get down on one knee again, pull out the ring, and ask her to marry me. And then she says, the same thing. Not just yet. I couldn't believe it. Like what? I just stood there for a second, trying to figure out if I heard her right. Not just yet. Again? I felt like I'd just been punched in the gut. It wasn't like last time where I brushed it off and told myself it wasn't a big deal. This time it was different. It hurt way more. I stood up trying to stay calm, but I had to ask, why? What's stopping you? I was trying to keep it cool, but I was frustrated as hell. She looked at me, all teary-eyed, and said the same thing she said last year. She wanted to make sure things would work out, that she wasn't ready yet. And that's when I started getting mad. I asked her straight up if there was someone else. Like maybe someone was influencing her. Maybe her parents, maybe a friend. I didn't know. It just didn't make sense. We'd been together for four years. How could she not know by now if she wanted to marry me? She shook her head and said no, it wasn't anyone else. She just needed more time. At that moment everything just kind of hit me. I had waited a whole year since the last proposal. I had gone through all this effort to make sure this one was perfect. I thought we were in a better place, and yet here I was, standing in the middle of this beautiful garden, being told not yet again. I felt like an idiot. Like how many times am I supposed to ask? How long am I supposed to wait? I told her that. I told her if after four years she still wasn't sure, then I didn't know what else to do. I couldn't keep waiting for her to figure it out. It felt like I was putting my life on hold for someone who wasn't even sure they wanted to be in it for the long haul. She didn't say much. Just asked for more time, again. And that's when I snapped. I didn't yell or anything, but I was done. I told her, I can't do this anymore. I love you. But I'm not going to keep putting myself out there if you're just going to keep saying no. I could see the look on her face change. She realized I was serious. She started crying, begging me not to leave. That's when she said, fine, I'll marry you. Please don't go. And that, that's what pissed me off the most. Like she was only willing to say yes now that she knew I was ready to walk away. It didn't feel real. It didn't feel like she actually wanted to marry me. It felt like she was just afraid of losing me. I didn't even respond. I just walked away. I didn't know what else to say. My head was spinning. My heart was broken. And all I wanted was to get the hell out of there. After that second proposal, I knew something had to change. I couldn't just go back to pretending everything was fine, like I did the first time. But for a couple of days, I didn't know what to do. My mind was all over the place. I mean, for years is a long time to be with someone. And I wasn't sure if I was ready to just throw it all away. But at the same time, I couldn't shake the feeling that she'd never be ready. And if she wasn't ready by now, then when? I didn't talk to Kiera much the day after the proposal. She stayed in the guest room, which was kind of our unspoken way of handling fights. Just give each other space. Normally, by the next day, we'd talk things out and be good again. But this time, I didn't want to talk. I didn't even know if I had anything to say. I needed to process what had just happened. A couple of days passed, and I realized that I wasn't mad at her anymore. I was just, disappointed. You know that feeling when you've put everything into something and you still come up short? That's where I was. Like, I did everything right. Or at least I thought I did. And it still wasn't enough. It sucked. Plain and simple. By the end of the week, we finally sat down to talk. She was the one to bring it up, actually. She sat me down on the couch and said we needed to figure things out. And yeah, we did. We couldn't keep avoiding it. So I told her exactly how I felt. That I couldn't keep waiting for her to figure out if she wanted to marry me or not. I said that if she didn't know after four years, I wasn't sure she ever would. She just sat there, quiet, for what felt like forever. Then she said, I do love you. I want to be with you. I just don't think I'm ready for marriage yet. And there it was again. That same damn phrase. Not ready. I could feel my frustration building up again, but I kept it together. Why not? I asked. What's stopping you? I mean, we've been together for four years and we've talked about getting married before. You said you wanted this. She sighed and I could tell she was struggling to explain. I don't know, she said. I just, it's a big commitment. And I don't want to rush into something I'm not sure about. That's when it hit me. She wasn't sure about me. Not us. Not the relationship. Just me. And honestly, that hurt more than I thought it would. I could deal with someone not being ready to get married, but not being sure about me after four years? That was a whole different thing. I leaned back on the couch, trying to process it. I asked her straight up. Are you ever going to be sure? She looked at me and for the first time, she didn't have an answer. She just sat there, staring at her hands, not saying a word. That's when I knew. I stood up and I told her, I can't keep doing this. 
I love you, but if you're not sure about me by now, I don't think you ever will be. And I'm not going to wait around forever, hoping you'll change your mind. She started crying. And yeah, it was tough to see. I didn't want to hurt her. I never did. But I couldn't keep pretending everything was fine. She begged me not to leave. She kept saying, I'll marry you, I promise. Just give me a little more time. But that's the thing. I didn't want her to marry me just because she was scared of losing me. I wanted her to want it, to be excited about it. And she wasn't. She was just scared of being alone. That wasn't the kind of marriage I wanted. And I wasn't going to settle for that. So, I told her I needed to leave. I packed a bag that night and stayed at a friend's place for a few days. I figured we both needed some space to cool off and think about what we wanted. But deep down, I knew it was over. There was no coming back from this. The next few days were rough. I kept going over everything in my head, trying to figure out where it went wrong. Was it me? Was it her? Was it both of us? I don't know. All I knew was that it didn't feel right anymore. The relationship had turned into something it wasn't supposed to be, and I couldn't fix it. That week, she called me a few times. I didn't pick up at first because I wasn't ready to talk. But eventually, I answered. We had one of those awkward conversations where neither of us really knew what to say. She kept asking if I'd come home, and I kept saying I needed more time to think. The irony wasn't lost on me. Me asking for more time after being pissed about her doing the same. But it wasn't the same thing. I wasn't waiting to decide if I loved her. I was trying to figure out how to move on. Then came the texts. Oh man, the texts. Her friends, her parents, even some of our mutual friends started blowing up my phone. Apparently, she told everyone I dumped her because she wasn't ready to get married. And of course, they all took her side. They called me immature, selfish, a jerk for throwing away a four-year relationship just because she wasn't ready for the next step. But what they didn't understand, what none of them seemed to get, was that it wasn't about the wedding. It was about her not being sure about me. I mean, if someone's not sure about you after four years, how much longer are you supposed to wait? Five years? Ten? It felt like everyone was missing the point. The funny thing is, some of my friends didn't take her side. A few of them actually said they understood where I was coming from. They weren't taking sides exactly, but they weren't blaming me either. They knew what I had gone through, how much effort I put into the relationship, and that made me feel a little better knowing I wasn't completely crazy for walking away. I think that's when I finally accepted that it was over. I wasn't going back. No amount of begging or promises was going to change the fact that she didn't see a future with me. Not really. I went back to our place to get the rest of my stuff about a week later. Kiera wasn't there, and honestly, I was relieved. I didn't want to deal with another emotional conversation. I packed my things, left my key on the counter, and walked out for the last time. And just like that, it was over. For years. Done. And yeah, it hurt like hell. But for the first time in a long time, I felt like I made the right choice. I wasn't going to settle for someone who wasn't sure about me. I deserved better than that. Update 1. So after I packed my stuff and walked out of the apartment for the last time, I thought things would be kind of, easier? Like, I expected to feel this massive weight lift off my shoulders or something, but instead, everything felt heavy. I don't know how else to describe it, but it's like the breakup didn't really hit me until I was back at my friend Kyle's place, just sitting on his couch with my duffel bag at my feet. Kyle's a good guy, one of those friends who doesn't ask too many questions and just hands you a soda when you need it. He didn't try to pry or give me advice. He just let me crash at his place. And we spent most of the nights playing video games or watching dumb movies. It helped for a bit, but then the messages started rolling in again and I couldn't escape the reality of what was happening. Kiera texted me almost every day. At first, it was the usual, can we talk and I miss you messages, which I kind of expected, but then she started getting frustrated. I didn't answer her calls, so she'd send these long texts about how I was being unreasonable for not wanting to work things out. She kept saying stuff like, you're throwing everything away over one small thing and you'll regret this. It pissed me off to be honest. Like I'm throwing everything away? I didn't know how to respond without starting another argument, so I just didn't. Ignoring her texts wasn't easy though. Every time my phone buzzed, I'd feel this pit in my stomach. Part of me still cared about her, but I knew deep down that this wasn't something we could fix. I had to remind myself that this wasn't just about marriage. It was about her not being sure about me, about us. The thing is, when you spend four years with someone, you get used to having them around. Even if things were rocky towards the end, Kiera had been a huge part of my life for so long that I didn't really know what to do with myself now that she wasn't. I kept finding myself scrolling through old photos of us on my phone, looking at all these memories we'd made. It's stupid, I know, but it was like I was trying to figure out where things went wrong. Like was there something I missed? Some sign that things were falling apart before the proposals? I spent way too much time thinking about that. Kyle told me I was overanalyzing it, and yeah, maybe he was right, but it was hard not to. When you invest that much time into someone, you want to believe that it all meant something, that it wasn't just a waste of time. After about a week of silence from Kiera, I started getting messages from her friends, and man, they were brutal. Some of them were straight up calling me a jerk for leaving her. One even said, you're just scared of commitment, which is rich, considering I literally proposed twice. Another one of her friends wrote this long message about how I was being selfish for not giving Kiera more time to figure things out. Apparently, for years wasn't enough? But here's the thing, I know I said I wouldn't use that phrase. Her friend Ashley actually sent me a message saying, you were just a safe bet for her, she'll find someone better now. Like damn. I didn't respond to that one either, but it stuck with me. Was I just some backup plan for her? It wasn't like Kiera ever said anything like that, but the more I thought about it, the more I wondered if she was waiting for someone else, someone better, whatever that means. Meanwhile, my friends were giving me their own opinions. Kyle, as usual, kept it simple. Dude, you're better off. If she can't decide after four years, she's never going to. My buddy Matt was a bit more vocal. He thought I should have left sooner, like after the first rejection. He kept saying, why'd you give her a second chance, man? She made it clear the first time. I didn't really have an answer for that. I guess I just didn't want to give up on her that easily. 
Maybe that makes me sound stupid, but I wanted to believe things could still work out back then. It was a weird mix of emotions. I was angry, frustrated, but also sad. And part of me couldn't shake the guilt. Every time I saw her friend's text, I'd think, am I the bad guy here? I kept questioning myself, even though I knew I did what I had to do. Breaking up wasn't some knee-jerk reaction. It was something I thought about for a long time. But still, when you're getting hit from all sides with people telling you you're the asshole, it messes with your head. About two weeks after the breakup, I finally got a text from Kiera that wasn't angry. It was simple. I understand now. I'm sorry. I hope you find someone who makes you happy. That was the last message I got from her. No more calls, no more texts. It felt weirdly final, and I wasn't sure how to feel about it. On one hand, I was relieved that the constant back and forth was over. On the other hand, it felt like the last thread between us had been cut. I wish I could say that's when everything got easier, but honestly, it didn't. I still had moments where I'd think about her, about what we had, and what could have been. But over time, those moments got fewer and fewer. The more space I had from her, the more I realized that breaking up was the right choice. It hurt like hell, but it was necessary. I didn't want to be stuck in a relationship where I was always waiting for her to be ready. Eventually, I moved out of Kyle's place and got my own apartment. It wasn't anything fancy. Just a one-bedroom in a decent part of town, but it was mine. I started focusing on myself more, hanging out with friends, hitting the gym, just trying to get my life back on track. And slowly, things started feeling normal again. I'm not saying I'm over it 100%, but I'm in a better place now. Looking back, I realized that I deserve someone who's sure about me, not someone who needs years to decide if I'm worth it. It's still a tough pill to swallow, but I've accepted it. So yeah, that's the aftermath. It wasn't pretty, and I'm still dealing with some of the fallout, but I think I'm finally moving on. Update 2 So after months of adjusting to life on my own, I felt like I was finally getting the hang of things. It's not like everything magically got better or something, but things were just easier. I wasn't waking up every morning with that knot in my stomach anymore. Kiera wasn't on my mind all the time, and I wasn't constantly checking my phone to see if she texted. I had my routine, my space, and honestly, it was nice to have my own place again. I could leave dishes in the sink if I wanted blast music at 1am, or just sit in silence with a soda on the balcony. No one to answer to. It felt good work was going fine. I wasn't one of those people who throws themselves into their job after a breakup or whatever, but having something to focus on definitely helped. I didn't think about anything else when I was knee-deep in projects or sitting in meetings. I think that was my biggest win, just being able to focus on something without getting distracted by thoughts of the past. But, as anyone will tell you, just when you think you're moving on, life has this way of throwing something at you to test if you're really over it. I was at a bar with Kyle one Friday night. We hadn't done a proper hangout in a while because we'd both been busy with work, so we decided to grab a few drinks, shoot some pool, and catch up. The night was going great. Laughs, beers, trash talking over pool, the usual. It was just one of those nights where you're not thinking about anything too heavy, just enjoying the moment. Then, out of nowhere, Kyle gets this weird look on his face while we're playing. I'm about to line up a shot when he says, uh, dude, Kiera's here. I froze. My mind went blank for a second, and I just stood there with the pool cue in my hand, not knowing what to do. I hadn't seen her in months. Like, yeah, I knew she was seeing someone new. But it's one thing to hear about it through the grapevine and another thing to see it with your own eyes. I tried to play it cool, though. I didn't want to freak out or anything. I mean, it's a small town and it was bound to happen at some point, right? I took a deep breath and casually glanced over. And there she was, sitting at the bar with a guy. They were laughing, having a drink, looking like they were having a good time. And you know what? It didn't hit me the way I thought it would. Yeah, my heart kind of sank at first, but it wasn't the gut-wrenching feeling I was expecting. I just stood there, staring for a second, then looked back at Kyle, who was watching me like I was about to lose it. I shook my head and said, it's fine, man. Let's keep playing. And that was it. No big dramatic moment. No meltdown. We just went back to the game. And I did my best to act like I hadn't just seen my ex with someone else. It wasn't easy, though. Every time I looked up, there they were, laughing, talking, looking happy. It wasn't jealousy, exactly. More like this weird mix of nostalgia and relief. Like, part of me missed her, but another part of me was glad it wasn't me sitting at that bar with her anymore. Kyle noticed I was kind of quiet after that, and he asked if I was cool. I told him I was fine, but deep down, I felt this weird emptiness. Not because I wanted Kiera back, but because it hit me that this chapter of my life was really over. Seeing her with someone else was like the final nail in the coffin. It wasn't just me moving on, it was her too. And that stung a little, even if I knew it was for the best. We finished up at the bar and decided to call it a night. Kyle kept asking if I wanted to grab another drink or hit another spot, but I told him I was tired and just wanted to head home. I think he knew I wasn't really in the mood for more socializing. When I got home, I sat on my balcony with a soda just staring out at the trees, thinking about how much had changed in the last few months. A year ago, I was planning a future with Kiera. Now she was just a memory, someone I used to know. It was a lot to take in, but at the same time, I felt this sense of closure. Seeing her with someone else, happy, made me realize that it was time to really let go. And that's what I did. I sat there on the balcony for a long time just thinking about everything that had happened, and for the first time in a long time, I wasn't angry or sad or confused. I was just okay with it. Life goes on and so do people. Kiera had moved on, and so had I. It wasn't some dramatic revelation or anything, just a quiet acceptance that things were the way they were. The next morning, I woke up feeling lighter. It sounds cheesy, but it was like this big weight had been lifted off my shoulders. I wasn't holding on to any anger or regret anymore. Kiera was part of my past, and now it was time to focus on my future. Over the next few weeks, I started putting myself out there again. I'm not saying I jumped back into the dating scene or anything. I wasn't ready for that yet, but I stopped avoiding it. I went out more, talked to people, started thinking about what I wanted for myself, not just in a relationship, but in life in general. It's funny how breakups make you reevaluate everything. It wasn't just about moving on from Kiera. 
It was about figuring out who I was and what I wanted from life. And I realized that I still had a lot to figure out, but that was okay. I wasn't in a rush. For the first time in a long time, I was content with where I was. So, yeah, that's pretty much where things stand now. I'm moving forward. Slowly, but surely. It's not perfect, but life never is. And honestly, I'm okay with that. I'm learning to take things as they come, to not stress too much about the future, and to just enjoy where I am right now. Who knows what's next? I guess I'll just have to wait and see.